Hi everyone, welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff before we jump into today's video. I have a few goodies going up in the stash shop today which includes some uh, Pigma Micron fine liners. Now I do have a few in sepia as well as black and there are a range of sizes so if it's something that you would like to try out you can head over to the stash shop. The other interesting things that I have is a set of six Derwent metallic coloured pencils. Now these came in a scroller box quite some time ago I really, really like them, but I went and bought the bigger set for myself. So other than the scroller challenge, these are actually unused and they're lovely on black paper, really good for Christmas cards, that kind of thing. And I also have a copy of 101 Textures in Graphite and Charcoal. This book is absolutely indispensable if you want to learn a bit more about texture. This also applies to coloured pencil as well. So there is a spare copy of this. Again, I already have a copy of this book in the stash shop for anyone that fancies it. So welcome back everyone and welcome back not only to the channel but to Seasons as well by Hannah Carlson and we're going to jump back in here and we're going to look at colouring autumn leaves. I absolutely cracked myself up after the last video in here where I spent all my time in a turnip. The first comment when somebody said um, it's a beat. It was so blatantly obvious and I don't know why I picked up on that in the first place. Like it really it gave me proper belly laughs and I thought that just must be my Scottishness coming out. <laughs> the size of the actual crop to the leaves should have made it perfectly obvious that it was a beat. <laughs> but never mind, I'm, you know, it's just my imagination, it's fine. <laughs> Anyway, today we're going to be focusing on these leaves. Now, I have just been out to the garden. As some of you will know that I have a lot of really big trees in the garden. So I brought a selection of leaves in. They're still a wee bit damp. Um, I wanted to bring them in fresh because the heat in the cave just makes them curl up really, really quickly. Uh, so you can see I've deliberately picked some here. Uh, this one has a little bit of yellow and green in it. And I've kind of gone from there through the varying stages of decay. Um, to uh, the, these little leaves here. These always come out quite nice, nice reddish colours and obviously I've got this one here as well. So this is kind of going to be my reference and I'm not going to use all of them obviously because we have only two leaves here. What I was thinking though is if we look at these colours next to what we've already got in our picture because again although these items are individual we do want it to tie in quite nicely. And I feel that we should maybe go for some browns because it's something that we don't have a lot of. That might be quite nice. So just as before, we are using the Castle Arts pencils. And now I can confidently say that I am enjoying these pencils in this colouring book. They do seem to be temperamental. I didn't get on well with them in Johanna Basford's colouring books. But for the purposes of what we are doing here, the colours are great and they're going down really well on the paper. So I've got my swatch book here as well and I'm going to try and match up some of these leaf colours to pencils or the closest that we can and then we can do a bit of layering and blending just to get them where we want them to be. Uh, not Crayolas, no. I'll get a cadmium yellow and then there's a wee bit of green and brown in there. Mm, probably cadmium green pale. Which, funnily enough, was one of the colours we used up here. And then we've got a bit of reddish brown here as well, which looks remarkably like burnt sienna. Alright then, and just for this darkest leaf now, oh, this is so nice. Uh, I think we can attribute some of the burnt sienna before in some of these paler parts, especially. If I hold this up to the light, you can see the light shining through it. It's much more red. So I'm sticking with the darker colours again, just looking at this leaf as a whole. That's what I'm trying to achieve. So I'm going to start with my lightest brown. In fact, I might even bring in a little bit of the uh, of the cadmium yellow just as a base layer. That's just what I'm going to do. So grab the cadmium yellow and I'm just going to put a light layer of this down over all of the main parts. I'm not going to bother with the veins just now because they're going to be quite dark. Uh, what, th what this lets us do is it gives us a little bit of room for manoeuvre. It keeps the colours nice and warm. Uh, it means we can have a little bit of variation. So if we decide we want to make an odd spot in it, we can really build up the yellow and it will stand out. So that's quite nice just to give us options because you want this to be quite free flowing. We don't want to be following something rigidly, as I said, because it just it makes it look really odd and unnatural. So I'll pop that up there just now. And now I'm going to grab my burnt sienna. And I'm going to concentrate on, first of all, sharpening it. <laughs> At these two tips here, I'm going to keep these quite um, 
quite a reddish orange. Right, let's get zoomed in a bit now. So I'm going to concentrate on these two tips here. So I've got my burnt sienna and I'm just going to put a layer of that down to about halfway down that leaf there. And I'm going to do the same here. So that's very, very, very light. So if I alternate now between this cadmium yellow and using the same pressures I've just used, really, really light. So we're layering up here. This is going to give us a nice bright spot on this leaf and it's given us a nice variation. Because if we start to layer up this sienna now on top of this, it's going to give it a really nice sort of orangish, reddish hue. Now when you come to the edges, you can just go very gently and feather that out there. So I'm going to put another layer of this burnt sienna down now. We're starting to build these layers up now. And that's giving us a lovely colour. Absolutely lovely. Look at that. Really, really nice. So I'll maybe do one more layer of, of the cadmium yellow. Now with this sienna, this burnt sienna, we want to start working it now. And what we can do is... And start building up maybe some here and we can carry that colour on perhaps down into the main part of this leaf here. Oh, I love it when the sun comes out. Oh, I'm blind! Bet you when I go to uh, take the dogs for a WALK in about an hour's time the sun isn't out like that. I can guarantee it'll be raining. Always the same. I do find it quite amusing though because it always comes out when I'm colouring. It's not even when I'm drawing or painting, it's always when I'm colouring. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that as a starting point, but we want to bring in some richer, deeper colour here. So this little section here, I'm just going to do exactly the same as I did over here. So alternate a wee bit of the yellow and the, the sienna. And I might even favour more towards the yellow on this, just this tiny little part. And again, this is about going with the flow and deciding what's, what's, you know, what's right for you and what's not. So yeah, I think I'm gonna um I'm gonna leave that more yellow than brown. Just that very end there. And then I can start working this down. So for the time being, I'm gonna say goodbye to my cadmium yellow. And uh, I'm just back to this burnt sienna now. And I'm gonna join this up with the part that we were just doing over here. So by working a section at a time here, we're gonna get nice variation in the colour and the the pattern on these leaves because it's not really going to be a pattern. So I'm just on a second layer here, I'm just building up some colour. And it's going to give you that irregularity without looking as if you've tried too hard if you just go a section at a time. So I'm going to pull in some of the darker colours now and I'm really drawn towards putting burnt umber right in at this bottom part here. So I'm just going to go for it. And I want it kind of radiating out. Now you can see because we've put that yellow down and then we've put the burnt umber, eh, the burnt sienna down. Can you see how delicate the burnt umber is? It's still dark, but it's not taken over. You know there isn't this massive stark contrast. So I'm going to work in the burnt sienna. So I'm going to start blending these together here. Now we do have these little black dots on this leaf here. I'm not that bothered about making them any more obvious, but I do want to play about with the creases on this a little bit. So I'm, I'm back to the darkest pencil here, the burnt umber. And kind of like I did with the pumpkin, I'm just following Hannah's lines, but I just want to add in a little bit of that darker colour to give us a bit of texture and make it a bit more, a bit more interesting. So I'm just working in a little bit of the burnt umber in the places where the, these sort of, I call them crinkly, crinkly lines, where the crinkly lines come in. So now on this bottom part of the leaf, which is obviously off to the side here, I'm just going to put down a layer of the burnt sienna. But I'm going to make this a lot darker. So this part here is going to look a bit more like this rather than what we're doing out here because we want this to pop out. And if you do it at every single part of the leaf, it kind of loses its impact a wee bit and we don't want that either. And we want our leaves to be interesting to look at. So I'm going to my burnt umber now. I'm just going to turn this book slightly to make it easier for myself here. Here, yeah, we don't make you seasick. A layer of the burnt umber, which is the darkest brown, all over. All over. 
all the way up there. Now we can go back to our burnt sienna and work that in around these top edges here. Because there, there, there may or may not be an abrupt difference between each side of this leaf, but I wouldn't think it would be too abrupt. Because leaf senescence tends to happen from the edges and then towards the stem, so you would think that this would be quite even. Obviously you do get variation in that, but there we go, so I'll bring that down there. So I brought that down to about halfway, and I'm just going to work the burnt umber in in this bottom part here. Obviously, using a colour like this, our, our grey outline isn't going to have as much of an impact. Um, but it's still there, it still softens that edge enough, so it's still worth doing. So we've got a bit of a deeper and richer brown in this corner here. And that's really given into the, you know, the fact that that leaf's all pinching in. And if you look at this one here, you can see how dark these parts are in here. So we're kind of mimicking that. Now just with the uh, with the cool grey deep, again I just want to accentuate some of these areas here. So just round about those lines that Hannah's left us. Just add in a little bit more. So moving over to this other side now. We're going to do the same thing down this outside edge here. So exactly, exactly what I've just done. And I'm maybe only going to bring that to about there on this side. Again, we want to try and keep this as interesting as possible. So back to my burnt umber. Build up some colour here. Now let's grab the walnut brown. Come on, walnut brown. And let's just pop a wee bit of that in along the, the vein here. Now this is a much warmer brown than the burnt umber. It's not going to do much, it's just going to give us a bit of variation. I might even join that into the burnt sienna because it's a warm colour as well. It's just to make it that little bit more interesting. And then I'll just uh, blend it into that with the, the burnt umber again. So subtle, so, so subtle. Again, I feel this is kind of like tucked in here, so I might just grab that um, the, the grey again and pop that in first. Yeah, and that's blending really nicely with the browns. Okay, coming up here now to my warmer colours. Back to my burnt sienna here. You can just see a little bit of that yet cadmium yellow peeking through as well, which is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so for this last section here then, I think we'll pop the burnt umber in first over our little layer of cadmium yellow. And I might actually want to bring that quite far up. I mean, let's make this part quite dramatic. And again, that'll help these paler parts pop out a little bit more. I'll pop some of that in maybe. And again, I'm going to grab that walnut brown just for a bit of warmth again along this side to make it sort of tie in with what's going on over there a little bit more so let's let's see yeah, it let's pop some of that in so that's like two or three layers just in that one section and maybe just a bit in there just for fun <laughs> why not oh this looks like a whale face oh no look can you see the little whale face look that happened with something else, didn't it? There was another colour along we were doing and I saw faces. I can't remember which one. Oh, it was in the broccoli trees, wasn't it? It was the broccoli trees in Circle of Life. That was really funny as well. Okay, so we've got our little whale friend here, so I'm going to have to make him into a thing now. So I'm going <laughs> to take the burnt sienna and I'm going to do his little chin for him. And I might even leave that pail around his eye just because we've decided that he's a whale. Oh, yeah, let's get the yellow out again. And I'm going to make the top part of his nose a bit lighter. <laughs> play, play that. <laughs> simple things, folks. Simple things. So, And then I'll just go back over that with the burnt sienna because I don't want it to stand out too much. But we know he's there. And again, I'm just going to start blending in and add... <laughs> that's really tickled me. Adding layers to the, the burnt umber here. <laughs> Right, let's go back to the burnt umber and build this up down here now. <laughs> enough of the nonsense. This is quite enough nonsense. Here we are. So it's blended into that walnut brown quite nicely. And we'll bring it up towards our little whale friend here. Just hanging out, chilling out at the end of his leaf, you know, as you do when you're a whale. Uh, again, just in this uh, in this crevice here, I'm going to take a little bit of this cool grey deep. And then just back to this burnt sienna to finish off blending out our little whale friend here. He looks lovely, by the way. 
and then we'll do the same we'll just take this burnt sienna now when i step back and look at that leaf there's quite a lot going on there so i don't want to i don't want this to be any more exotic than it already is because it just starts to look a bit kind of um overdone so i'm just going to take this burnt sienna over this whole area and all we're doing is going to build this up now so that we get some nice rich color and again i can take my burnt umber and i can just accentuate some of these creased areas here if that's what i want to do which i do now i'm going to take this cool gray deep and just a very gentle bit of that down the veins and then again to my darkest pencil which is the burnt umber and i'm going to make sure i've got a really pointy point on this just because we're working in a tight space so that was on a number five on the on the tagal so that's the longest pointiest point you can get i was wondering whether that was going to be okay or not because we've had a little bit of a problem but it seems to be okay and i literally just want to fill this in block color it no point in worrying about wee tiny areas like this just do the doing do it do it do it and if you need to sharpen halfway through, then so be it. Again, I'm using quite a firm pressure here because I'm not going to be putting in any shading or anything like that. So one of the very few times I can lean fairly heavily. And there we go, that's our first leaf. So if I zoom out a little bit now, it's adding to our autumnal page fairly well here. I've already decided in this time that we've spent colouring this, I don't want any green in this because I just feel like there's too much green going on. So I'm going to go for this sort of idea instead. So we're going to go yellow into these colours, but we'll use more yellow than anything else. So for this other leaf, the two colours I'm going to start with is the cadmium yellow and also the green gold, which we will be using sparingly. So we'll start with a layer of cadmium yellow and I think what we'll do is we will have a little bit of this green gold at the base because this is going to be more green-ish. So I'm maybe going to put a little bit of that down in these two areas here and then we'll maybe pull out a little bit with the cadmium yellow. So that's good, it's not too greenish looking. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our Walnut Brown, which is one of the pencils that we picked out earlier. And we're also going to take the Burnt Sienna. Burnt Sienna is very popular just now. So with the Walnut Brown, we're going to start trying to create these kind of like dotty patches. It's quite a nice pattern on this. So we're, we're going to try it up here first. So we want to start with a tiny little circle. It's very, very light pressure. And we want to build that up until it's fairly intense. And then as we're building up these layers, we want to start working out the way to make it bigger and bigger. But keep our pressure very, very light. Until you have something that looks a little bit like that. So it'll be quite heavy in the middle and softer on the outside. And then what we can do is we can take our burnt sienna. And we can blend that in just a very light ring. Again, around the outside of what we've just done. And if we repeat that in several places, it's going to get us to build up a pattern just like these leaves. Now, it's up to you how close together and how obvious you want them to be. Um, for me personally, I prefer a more sort of sporadic approach because I'm quite keen on having, you know, quite a lot of yellow showing here. So I don't want them too close together, but it's entirely up to you because you can, especially when you're using this burnt sienna, you can overlap these, you know, you can have them really close together so that they start to overlap and that's going to give you a really nice effect as well. But using the walnut brown in the middle just gives you a really nice sort of intense starting point and then you can work out the areas round about like this. So I think I'm going to have another one in here and maybe have a bit of an overlap. Now this is the kind of thing, I mean, I could sit here for days doing this. <laughs> you do you do have to have patience for it. You know, that's uh, that's just one, just one of those things. Um, but you don't have to spend a huge amount of time on it if you don't want to. Okay, so just for that little section there, I'm quite happy with that. So I'm going to finish off this top edge here using these brown pencils. 
And with the dots on this one, I think I'm going to use them as the, the starting point for some of these. You know, actually incorporate them into, into what I'm doing. So these are going to be really close together, these ones. So you can see how that, that's kind of started to form. That's turned out quite nicely as well. So now I'm going to go back to my cadmium yellow. And I'm going to put a layer down on top of everything. So that's going to help soften the edges of these brown spots as well. You can see that's looking fairly, fairly good. I may even build up a little bit more colour, the likes of in here. And I can take my green gold and I can work on this fold here. Maybe just build a little bit of that up in there. Kind of the way that we were doing with the grey over on this one. So we're going to do more of the same here. We're going to build this up. And build up this pattern. So the walnut brown to start with and then the burnt sienna for the outer edges. So while we're doing this set, this is just exactly the same we've just done. I'm not doing anything different. So while we're doing this, I'll tell you a funny story about um colours. Most of you will be in a position where you have... Probably one set of pencils that you know fairly well, you know, and you know the colours and where they are in your pencil cases and all that jazz. And um, for the more experienced of you that use any any sort of medium, really, it doesn't have to be colour pencils, but you do get to know your colours, don't you? And then you get to a point where you see things uh, in the real world. And it happened to me in the supermarket once with a lady who had a very nice blouse on and it was a long blouse so it went it was almost her knees and she was in front of me at the checkout putting her shopping up this was way way before the pandemic putting her shopping up and I took one look at her blouse and the first thing that came into my mind was oh that's chartreuse <laughs> I was thinking about the Prismacolor pencil uh, I really wanted to like pull out a swatch book just to see how close I was so that that's something that I do anyway and I'm pretty sure there's a lot of you that do that too that kind of try and identify things to the closest colour of paint or pencil that you know and, uh, Papa Jem and Mama Jem are getting a new car and Papa Jem had said to me that it's blue this new car is blue and uh, I hadn't I hadn't seen one before. It's one of these uh, new electric cars and I haven't seen one on the road so I didn't know what they looked like and I thought, oh, well, I'll look it up on, on Tinterwebs. I'll have a look on the internet, Google it and just see, you know, what the car looks like. And I couldn't find a blue one and I thought, right, okay. So I said to Papa Gem, I said, can you send me a picture of the, of the car? I said, because I can't find it in blue. So he sends me this picture and straight away I said to him, I said, that's not blue, that's grey. And he said, he says, no, it's called, it was like stonewashed blue or something. And I'm like, it's freaking grey. So <laughs> I pulled out my uh, my pencil swatch book, the one we've just been in, this one here. So their car colour is identical to slate grey in the Prismacolor pencil set. So uh, I just sent a picture of that to my dad. <laughs> and I never got a reply. I was like, it's grey, it's not blue, it's grey. Uh, that just it really really tickled me because only someone like me would do something like that but I know that you guys will appreciate that and there's some of you that would probably do that too but the, the minute I saw it I thought there, that looks remarkably like a pencil that I know quite well and uh, here here you go it was a Prismacolor <laughs> so it'll be interesting to see what it's like because obviously I mean a lot of these cars it's metallic paint and things and they look different colours and different light so I'll be really keen to find out what it actually looks like IRL uh, when it arrives, if it ever arrives, because they've been delayed by like three months already. Okay, so now I'm just going in with this uh, cadmium yellow. Is it cat? Yes. Oh, I thought it was misleading you there again. So just a light layer over the top of everything, blend out and soften out some of these little edges that we've been making. I've got a collie that wouldn't settle down today. What's wrong with you? Mm, you got to wait. It's nearly time for a WALK, that's why. My um, my schedule's changed a little bit recently. I've started a new project with my proper job and it requires me to work set hours, uh, you know, at certain times of day. So I've had to sort of amend my routine with the puppers as well. So they, they normally they would be going out about now, but with new work routine, they're not going out now, <laughs> just now. Um, so I'm just trying to stick to it and get them into that habit. Some of these are a little bit pale here, so I'm just going to add in a couple more. They're not really getting the hang of it, though. They're not, um, they're not entirely convinced that this is what should be happening. <laughs> they just sit and look at me like, why are we not going? Right, let's try this outside section as well here. Right, go and lie down for a wee minute. 
Go and lie down. You as well. Go on. Good boy, Jock. You obviously, for this part, when you're sort of blending out with your burnt sienna, you don't have to have a really pointy point on your pencil. The less of a pointy point you've got, the better you're going to get on because it's going to be softer and you're going to have no harsh lines. And again, I think I maybe want a little bit of this green gold just up here where the creases are. It's so subtle. I mean, it is a bit of green, but it's, it's so subtle. It's not really, really obvious, which is why I really like it. Do you know that way you're, when you're aware that someone's watching you? And Jock is just sitting under the desk eyeballing me. Like he's side-eyeing me as if to say, can we hurry this along, please? Because we've got somewhere we need to be. It's really, really unnerving. Okay, right. <laughs> I will not be rushed. Uh, so in this last section now, and I'm just while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the um the the leaf's vein color, and I think I'm going to keep them quite pale. If I go back to my my reference leaf here, it's um it's it's patchy. It really is patchy. The the veins themselves in you know the little delicate ones are quite dark. Uh, but I think we might want to keep him on the paler side because I don't want it to stand out too much is my thinking but we'll see we can start light and go darker and again if you're ever in a quandary about things like that and you're not entirely sure what to do start lighter because you can always make it darker if you start really dark and you decide it's wrong then you're kind of stuffed so that's just it if you feel like being cautious obviously if you're quite confident in what you're doing then you just go for I'm loving as well the number of people, just recently there seems to have been a little spate of people that have got in touch with me and have said that I've inspired them to have a go in books that they are either frightened of or that they don't want to ruin. And that's really nice because it's only a bit of paper, it's only a book. And quite often we can learn it from our mistakes or if we're a wee bit out of our depth, we learn a lesson for next time. So I fully encourage people just to go for it. Don't be scared because at the end of the day, it's a colouring book. No one has to see it. You don't have to broadcast it to the world. So why not just have fun? Because that's kind of what we were supposed to be doing with them in the first place. I'm just, uh, just while I've got this burnt sienna here, I think I'm going to use that to add in a few accents here again we don't want it to stand out too much against everything else okay again i think i'll just grab the green gold this is a rather rather large section here that's not doing very much so pop a wee bit of that in there as well Alrighty. okay for the for the vein what i'm going to do is i'm going to sharpen up my cadmium yellow get a nice point on it Ain't gonna get me a pointy point. And we'll just run that up here. And then I'm gonna take the burnt umber, uh, sorry, the burnt sienna, excuse me, the burnt sienna. And I'm gonna put a bit of it down the bottom here. And I'm gonna kind of use this sparingly. So I'm maybe gonna bring that up to there-ish. Maybe like a third of the way up. I'm also not happy about this part in here. I just want to go back over this with my cadmium yellow. It seems quite patchy and I don't want that. Okay, so let's take a zoom out now that we've finished our leaves and see how they look in with the rest of the picture. And uh, they're definitely fitting in with our autumnal theme. I'm really glad I didn't use the um, any green in that because I just think there's, there's the green's kind of like taken over the page a little bit. I will have maybe a little bit of green down the bottom here just to, you know, kind of like tie it in together and maybe again the same here on these acorns, but we shall wait and see. So uh, I hope that's given you some ideas for some autumn leaves today. Uh, obviously as well, we can have a look at the real thing right here. For those of you uh, that don't live in a climate where it is currently autumn, or if you live somewhere like Hawaii, <laughs> you know who you are, I'm looking at you. <laughs> fall, fall in Hawaii. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that's been interesting for you today, maybe giving you some ideas for colouring your own autumnal leaves. I've had really good fun with this. I think what we're going to do with this is um, I might actually finish this on our live stream. The live stream is on the 23rd of November. 
It's a Tuesday and it's going to be in the evening. So if you are available, uh, we'll maybe come back to this and do a bit more than that on that particular day, which isn't that far away now. Is that next Tuesday? Yeah, it'll be next Tuesday. So come and join us for the live stream if you are able to. That would be amazing. And uh, we can we can jig away with this for a little while longer. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Please stay safe. Take care of each other. And I will see you back in the cave on Sunday for another video. Did you hear that? <laughs> oh, that is Jock cantering through the house because he knows I'm finishing up and it's time to go for a walk. <laughs> see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.